Welcome everyone. Today I want to show you what I've been working on on my 7x14 inch uh, Micromark lathe. I've been spending a lot of time reading online and trying to get comfortable and, and learning how to sort of best set this lathe up and one of the things I wanted to start with and go over today is trying to best adjust the tail stock. So to do that I wanted to use my coax indicator. Uh, so the first thing I did was chucked up the indicator in my four jaw chuck uh, of which each jaw is individually adjustable and I have got the indicator mounted so that it's perfectly or very close to perfectly um, centered in the chuck and you can see um, on the dial indicator here which is indicating off the edge right here it is needle is barely moving and I'm going to zoom in here and show you. Okay, I've zoomed in here. This indicator reads in thousands. And if you look as I rotate the uh, chuck, it is moving a, 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 a little less than half a thou. And in fact, what I'll do is uh, turn on the lathe at a low speed here so you can see it without my hand in the way. I'd estimate it's you know, moving maybe a max half a thou. Um, so that's plenty good. So now that we've got the indicator uh, trued up, I'm gonna... So it's running true, and so uh, zooming back out here, and what I'm basically gonna do is a couple of different um, points experimenting with the tail stock. I just kinda wanna show you where where I've gotten in terms of, of how accurate I think the tail stock is, um, and sort of what the potential is without getting carried away. Okay, I've adjusted the angle of my indicator uh, rod, and I'm going to go ahead and just gently lift that up and slide the inside of the Morris Taper cylinder here. Lock down my tail stock, lock down the feed. I'll go ahead and zero up my coax indicator. Now, this reads in half thou increments, so um, I'm actually going to zero it here. On top, I'm zeroed. So if I measured from the top to the bottom, I'm actually, according to this reading, you know, perfectly on with a few ten within a few tenths. And if I measure from the back, I'm a plus maybe half a thou. And if I go to the front, I'm minus about half a thou. So that would imply that I'm um, my front to back offset is off about a thousandth of an inch. Now I've already adjusted my tail stock here um, just using uh, you know nothing other than the screwdriver and sort of moving it back and forth um, I've not gotten into any sort of shimming uh, I know some of the folks on the mini lathe website have actually you know milled this down or completely reworked it which you know if I find shortcomings in what I'm doing here I might try to tackle that later but uh, just trying to get a feel for sort of how it comes standard and trying to just get it set up without getting too involved so Moving this total maximum, uh, you know, indicated run out is less than a couple thousandths for sure. So pretty good. Okay, now what I've done is uh, go ahead and gone ahead and fed the tailstock all the way out to the max it'll go. Looks like it's about just a little shy of two inches, maybe an inch and seven eighths. So I'm going to go ahead and once again gently feed this up in. Lock down my tail stock, zero my coax indicator. So I'm just about, I feel zero here when I'm having the coax indicator facing the front. If I measure to the back, I'm uh, half a thou. Um, let's see here, what's my measurement? So that implies I'm half a thou too far back. And if I measure the top, is Actually, now here we're starting to get off a little bit. I'm two thousandth inch uh, low, and here I'm at the bottom. I'm a thou and a half high, so that's showing that the um, up and down movement of the t of the tailstock once when it's fed all the way out is off by a couple of thousands. And I, from what I've read um, online, that's not uncommon at all, given the uh, sort of quality of these import mills, but Frankly, that I'm completely happy with that, and I don't have any particular tolerances I need to keep for right now. 
Um, so that doesn't seem too bad to me. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the mill just so you can get a feel for how this is moving. So you can see the total cross, uh, the total marks in the indicator it's moving is about six or seven, but keep in mind that those are half foul ticks. So the total indicated run out here is probably somewhere around three thousandths. Okay, I've uh, retracted the tailstock uh, and have put in a dead center in the Morse taper MT2 spindle. And so I'm going to go ahead and scoot up the tailstock, lock it down, zero out my indicator, and one would hope that this should read very similar to the first reading, but I just want to see. That's great, and sure enough, total indicated run out here, positive about, uh, you know, less, well, you know, half a thou and under maybe a thou. So total indicated run out of maybe uh, thousands of an inch max, um, but very, very good. Okay, same thing, except this time I've gone ahead and uh, run the tailstock out about as far as they'll go. Once again, just a little under two inches with this time well with the uh, dead center in <clears throat> and I've zeroed up my indicator and similar to when I measured the inside of the Morse taper I'm going about negative four to about a positive five once again in half thou so total indicated run out of man eh, maybe three and a half thou, four thou. I'm going to turn the lathe on here just so you can see it again Okay, I've switched uh, indicators on uh, my coax indicator here and put in my Jacobs chuck. I'll probably be using this most of the time, if not all the time for now, on my tail stock, so I figured might as well uh, measure the run out on it since that's probably more important than the run out within the actual taper. So I've uh, put the tip on this facet here, zeroed out my indicator, and as I rotate it, um, I'm actually very surprised. Um, I'm only moving about uh, total indicator run out of, of actually less than a thousandth of an inch. Uh, I've got to imagine you know, this is exceeding my expectations. I've got, I'm curious to see if this will really stay as I start working and turning with the lathe. Uh, but that seems to me to be incredibly good. Next I'm going to run the tailstock out and see how much it Okay, same measurement on the uh, on my Jacob's chuck, except this time I've extended the tailstock all the way out, zeroed up my indicator, and as I rotate it, I'm going about positive and negative three or four ticks on my indicator, which is about two thousandths each way. So total indicated run out of, of probably four thousandths. Uh, once again, though, this is you know with the uh, tailstock all the way extended, which is you know about two inches, maybe an inch and three quarter. Uh, very, very okay. Last measurement. Uh, continuing with the theme of you know measuring what I'm actually going to be using, uh, I've measured the Jacobs chuck. Have found that that to be very minimal run out here as I measured this facet. Now I've put a drill bit, high speed drill, steel drill bit, in the Jacobs chuck, tighten it down. Um, and I'm going to measure the outside diameter of this drill bit. Zeroed up my indicator, and as I rotate it around, results are very similar to what I found all along, which is that the total indicated run out in this case is about a thousandth of an inch. Uh, once again, I'm a, I'm a little bit dubious. I almost wonder if this is too good to be true or if it's not going to last as I start, you know, using the equipment. But uh, I think uh, it's at least answered my question that I've got the tailstock set up at least close enough that I can start turning and cutting and, and knowing that I should be on center or pretty close to it and go from there. Thanks, everyone.